Focus. Focus. Ugh. Hey guys, it's Pope. Today I am going to be doing a little bit different style video. I decided to break down some weightlifting technique for you guys today. I put it on my Instagram story to see, get a feeler for what you guys would want me to talk about while I film today. And it was kind of close, but it appears that the power snatch seemed to win by a little bit versus talking about the front squat. I'm going to break down the cues that I'm going to be focused on on my workout today when I do the power snatch. I just wrote out my workout. I have three doubles on front squat, then I have eight singles on power snatch at 75, which is a pretty challenging weight for me for power snatch. I looked at this workout earlier and was like, oh, today looks easy, and then I realized what weight these power snatches are at. Anyways, this is my log I use. It's by Jim Gypsy. I get asked about it all the time, and I do have a promo code. I will overlay over this. It keeps me very organized. And, fun fact, I was having a really crappy workout like the week before last and Colin had me look back at the exact workout from the training cycle beforehand and see what I had written down on my notes. And it was so funny because I wrote down, fuck my life, I hate today, and some other like really dramatic things that matched the mood I was feeling that same workout on the current training cycle. <laughs> so writing down notes about your workouts is very helpful to go back and look at later. I didn't really realize that importance until that moment. Truffle, you ran in my video. I also awkwardly have this poster of myself laying next to me <laughs> during this video because I was trying to get a picture of it from my website. Going to be offering photos in the sequence posters coming soon. Hopefully I'll get them added to the site today. I'm going to be able to have my snatch here from Arnold, my PR snatch, and my PR clean and jerk of 108 that are shots taken by hook grip available. So if you have a gym and you want to hang those in your gym, feel free to get them. I am putting them on my site because I keep getting requests for them. Talking about the power snatch and first I'm going to touch on why I use the power snatch in my programming. Obviously a lot of people do powers, but I specifically requested to Colin when he first started coaching me that I want to be able to incorporate powers in both lifts at least once a week because I feel my particular lifting benefits from doing the power movements a whole lot. So I keep those in there once a week at all times during the training cycle, whether it be from the blocks or the floor, I'm always doing some sort of power movement in both the snatch and the clean and jerk. I keep this in the mix because the strongest part of my lifting comes from my top pull. That is where I am the most explosive and I feel that you shouldn't always be focusing on your weaknesses. You should always be honing in on your strengths as well. And when I neglect the power movements, I feel that that strength of mine isn't at its top condition. So I try to keep them in the mix all the time to make sure that my strong top pull stays a strong top pull. The other thing I find the power movements are really helpful for me are to work on my timing. The powers will show a lot more of a crash resulting in a missed lift versus a crash and something you can still save. Uh, a bar crash is when the bar, like for example on a clean, is too high when your feet hit the floor or when you land on a squat and it's about here and then it goes on top of you like this. And a lot of people know about that on the clean. Not a lot of people know about it in the snatch. And it's the same concept. So the bar is higher than you are landing in your squat. And then it's waiting for gravity basically. So it's, it's too high when your feet hit the floor. And then the bar meets the rest of the lift. I'm not exactly sure how to verbalize that <laughs> for the snatch. But there's this moment of like weightlessness for too long. Like you pulled too long and you were dropping too low, too fast. So the timing is just off on the lift. And I feel that I can create more body awareness for my lifting in the power movements versus the full movements. So when I'm doing the power snatch, I'm really, really focusing on that timing of my feet hitting the floor the same time that my turnover happens. So we want the final bit of wrist flick to be the same moment as the feet. And that's something I really focus on on the power snatch and what I'm going to be thinking about today. 
the three cues I'm going to really keep in mind for my workout today on the power snatch. First are going to be patient feet during the pull. Something that I have the tendency to do is to come up on my toes a bit early, especially on the power snatch when I'm putting that full force on the bar and not being patient in my power position. In the power position, you want your feet maybe not completely flat, especially not if you're an advanced lifter, but you want them flat as long as possible. So what I'm looking for while I'm doing these power snatch workouts, working at submaximal weight, 75 is not near my PR power snatch. Even though it's a high percentage, near 80%, it's still not maximum, so it gives me a chance to work on things like this. I'm going to be looking for those feet to stay as flat as possible, as long as possible, so I know that my shoulders are staying over the bar and that I'm not rearing back really at all, and especially not too soon. This is going to ensure that the bar path is upwards, not backwards, because sometimes, I'm sure you notice, I have a huge jump back on my power snatch, and that's okay only as long as you can pull the bar with the jump back, and at max weights, that's not gonna happen. I'm always gonna have a little bit of a jump back because my back is much stronger than my legs, so my top pull sometimes overpowers the rest of my lift, but I wanna try to keep it as little as possible because my upper body is only so strong to bring the bar with me. Can't jump back 10 feet because the bar is gonna end up in front. The second thing I'm going to be working on on the power snatches today is my upper body and specifically my arms. I want to be focused on high elbows, which is going to help elevate the bar as much as possible. So I want to focus on really finishing my pull with my elbows as high as possible as long as possible. And as you can see, I have awkward mobility with my arms. My right arm has really good rotation and my left arm has very minimal. This is the result of a car wreck a long time ago and there's nothing I can do about it. So this is an especially challenging part of the snatch for me. Getting my elbows high without the bar being way out in front of me. It's, it's really challenging and something I have to constantly think about and honestly it's kind of amazing that I can snatch at all with this awkward arm thing I have going on. <laughs> so that's the second cue I'm always really thinking about on the snatch but especially on the power snatch. High elbows, high elbows, high elbows and then turn it over. The third cue I am focusing on is matching my return feet or the placement of the feet back down on the floor after the finish of the pull, matching the turnover of the wrist. That's what I was talking about briefly before. And I want to find that feet hitting the floor sound matching the wrist turnover. And that's something I like to focus on on the powers. And then I see that transfer over into my full lifts as well. It really is the same. You're just catching much higher versus in a full squat. But there are other things kind of going on in my mind during the full snatch and they're at heavier weights. So I just picture the power snatch as the opportunity to really focus on that timing being together, hands and feet at the same time. <laughs> so I'm going to go get ready for lifting, get my hair up and get to front squatting. And then I'm going to try to maybe evaluate some of my lifts today and see how I'm doing on these three things that I need to be working on. And hopefully you can take some of this and apply it to your own lifting.
going to try to break down some of these lifts and kind of look at my technique. Starting to look at some of these warm-up sets, you could see I was doing some snatch pull to hip in the very beginning and that was working on keeping that flat-footed position while staying over the bar. You can see it here again with this set with 45. I'm drilling that pull to the hip with the feet flat and then trying to feel that on the power snatch. This is my last warm-up set here at 65 kilos before moving into my working sets at 70. This first set at 70 kilos was actually really good. You can see my feet staying flat throughout the pull to the hip and my turnover timing actually was very good. So right here, the explosion was not too early and the hands turn over with the bar at the same time the feet land back on the floor. That's what we want. The second set was pretty much identical to the first one, another good rep. So I'm just gonna let this one play so that you can see another example. The third set here was also pretty good. I got behind the bar a little bit, so you can see me struggle on the catch slightly, but this was still a good rep. This next set is a great example to see where things go wrong for me. I do not wait for the bar to get to my hip before I try to jump, and thus I end up with a big old jump backwards and have to really use my arms on the pole. You can see my knees come forward way too early, I'm up on my toes too early and it throws the whole lift off right there. This still results in a good lift on this 70 power snatch, but if this was a max effort single full snatch, this would probably be a miss. This next set I filmed a bit differently to watch my pull to the hip, trying to be a bit more patient. I actually did not correct it here and still had the jump back and the bar lands a little bit forward. You can hear me even say jump back afterwards. Part of the technique breaking down a bit now in these later sets is front fatigue. Eight sets at this weight in power snatch is a lot. So there is more focus now going into technique and it's less uh, muscle memory here when I'm getting fatigued. This one was really good. I'm gonna slow this one down. Nice patience to the hip and really good use of my arms, getting my elbows high. You can see the shoulders over the bar over the bar, flat feet, high elbows, and the bar lands exactly when the feet hit. This was a really good rep. This rep here pretty much replicated the one beforehand. This was another really solid one. So that was good to hit two with good technique in a row when I was getting pretty tired. The last one I did not make good timing with. I was a bit early on the throw and just a really soft catch and maybe slow turnover. I know some of these things are harder to see, especially when you're a beginner, but hopefully this was helpful for you guys to see my lifts broken down and slowed down a bit. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments if you want to see more videos like this. A little bit different than what I normally do, vlogging my training. I'm trying to get some information out there a bit more about some things that are helping my lifting, not just document my lifting it's itself. I'm gearing up for the Nationals next week. I'm very excited, and I hope I get to meet some of you guys there in Kansas City. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Bye.